What's up guys? Just a fresh video for you today if you've been trying to play a particular game and have been having ping issues. Uh, as you may know I play from the Philippines and I have to connect through one of the Asia servers usually and it's obviously overseas, like it's through a through a underground cable type of connection. And I have PLDT Fiber 100 Mbps, which if I just check my advertised speed, which should be PLDT Cebu, you can see that I'm getting the the type of speeds that they've advertised, like we're very close to it. See 2ms and it's hitting around 90, 90 Mbps. So now this is a bit different though because when you connect to a game server, this speed is not rele relevant because I'm connecting to Singapore and it's pinging a Cebu, you know, that's just like an island away from me uh, server. So, but as you can see, this is just to show that my, my internet is performing as advertised uh, and most, most ISPs will ping a local server when you do speed test. But to get the, a real idea of what kind of connection you have and to see if there's a routing issue, uh, one, you can use exit lag, which will give you an estimate to the servers, to the closest server you can find. So I can go through all the servers, which you can't do in some games. You can't select a specific server. Uh, but Path of Ex uh, Exit Lag gives you at least options to select local servers for whatever country you're in. So if I look at, say, Tokyo at 67, it's a bit high. If I go to South America, it has to ping it and it'll analyze routes and, and look for a path. So I don't normally select South America, that's why it's having to do this. But basically, uh, exit lag can give you a, an approximation of what your ping should be like if there's no routing issues. Okay, so if I actually go into the game, the game also estimates the same type of ping that exit lag is telling me. So the game says I should be getting around 54 ms. Uh, exit lag tells me I should be getting around 46 ms, so very close together. And if I ping, for example, here. If I change the server, so I want to play on Singapore because that seems to be the lowest ping that I can get. I tried Hong Kong and I was also not getting the advertised ping. We'll just use Singtel because that sounds familiar. And this will show, th this can give you an idea if you have routing issues. So if, if a game and an app like Exit Lag are showing with an optimal route, you would get X amount of ping. But then you ping it, you ping the country, like a server in the country. It's, I'm getting 93 ms. Okay, now this Mbps reading, it's important, but not as much as the ping. As long as you've got some decent speed, like even one Mbps is enough to play a game like, like Path of Exile because it has predictive mode, which doesn't use as much data, I would say. But you can see here my upload is the more important one. And that's pretty good actually to Singapore. But the main factor is that I'm getting a higher ping than than what the game and other apps are telling me. So you might be able to find a, a, a website that lets you ping the game server directly. That's a bit a, well, a lot more accurate. Uh, I can try a different. Let's go for the top one. I can try a different thing because it could just be that specific Singapore server having an issue. But that but you know the rough idea is there that I'm getting a higher higher ping based on bad routing basically so yeah that was even worse anyway uh, now to show you how to fix it and an example of my actual ping so you can see here that it had to estimate latency to Brazil just, just to show that I, I do get high ping on most other servers but I want Singapore I've got exit lag turned off in the top left now just to show you in game Singapore is 54 ms so that's what I should be getting right now if I log in Let's see what my actual ping is in game. This is what was bugging me, and I, I hadn't used exit lag in a bit because I couldn't afford the subscription. It's around 650 USD a month, but to be honest, in this lockdown times, it's definitely worth it. Okay, now if we look at my ping up here on the top right near the map, I'm getting 100. So that's around about what I was getting in speed test to the Singtel Singapore server. I was getting around 96 ms. So that I mean, for some people that you know, you're playing on PLDT or you're playing on a connection, you're getting about a 50 ms discrepancy, you might not care, but for a game like Path of Exile, it can be pretty frustrating getting that rubber banding uh, that happens with higher ping. So I decided to test exit lag to see if it's still, because it, it's worked in nearly every single game I've had a routing issue in. So, and it's just common with my ISP. So I'll turn it on. 
Okay, activating it. It's kicked me out of the game. So now this is the. It's using these routes. Okay, they're applied, and it, it's by the red light. I'm also going to try it in Valorant where I get 300 ping, and it's telling me I should be able to get 46, which is awesome. But I'll try that later. Anyway, so I've done that. I'm going to log back in. And so this is the live demo. And look at my ping now. It's down at 50. It's, it's halved. Basically, half my ping down to, down into the 50s using exit lag. So this isn't necessarily a VPN because I don't select a specific server that I connect through with exit lag. I mean, I do select it per, on a per game basis and it reconnects me to that server for the game. But it's not the same as where you're using a VPN where you just select the country you're in. Like you select, you're going to use a VPN through Japan and then you're on Japan all the time. Uh, it's not so much like that, I don't think. Uh, it's because I've tried other uh, VPNs and they didn't work the same way exit lag does on a per game basis. But yeah, uh, you can see that is a freaking awesome ping drop. And if I actually go play, I'm also running a little bit of a benchmark here because uh, some people were saying that the RX 5700 can't hold clock speed in Path of Exile. Well, at least at ultra wide 1440p it does, as you can see here. It's holding 1730. But. My ping is what I'm happy with. So this is exit lag uh, fixing my game. Basically, I can. There's still a limit to how much I can spam my lead slam. But before, if I would just travel, like for example, I'll go to the end of this path. I would already have rubber banding at some point doing this kind of gameplay at 100 ping. And yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty happy now. That's worth 650. Anyway, uh, if you decide to try it out, I've got an affiliate link in the comments and I'd appreciate it if you use that. Uh, they give like a tiny little bit of commission, but it doesn't cost you any extra uh, if you use an affiliate link to sign up. So yeah, if you decide to try it out, I'd appreciate it. And I'm just showing this demo so that people can see that you can, you might, might be able to fix your ping. There's a three day trial as well on their website just to make sure, like make sure it works because it can be different certain locations or if there's another factor that's not necessarily causing your high ping, like it's not routing related, it could just be that your connection is just way too slow, um, then it might not be able to fix it. But they do have a three day trial, so you can you can test it out to make sure and then once you're sure, then, then sign up. And they also let you pay on a, not a per permanent subscription. So when you, when you purchase, for example, one month, there's a checkbox where you can say do not automatically renew. So you can set that from the beginning. You don't you don't have to like cancel the subscription just before it ends. It'll just not renew by itself unless you tell it to. And they've got a one month, I think two month and three month subscriptions available. I, there might be a six month that was like 35 bucks, 35 USD. Uh, but you pay, if you pay it for like a multiple month subscription, you pay it all up front. So you'll pay, you know, 35 USD for six months and it's just a one-off but you can also check it not to renew by itself so after six months it's not going to renew unless you you sign up again so yeah i just want to share that guys because that ping drop is just epic it, it it makes it feel like so much better to play at 50 versus 100 ms and i want everyone else to anyone else playing you know from overseas playing from Australia there are Australian servers but if you've got a routing issue and you can see that your ping should be lower and exit lag like um, then yeah you can you can try it out do the trial and maybe get a ping drop as long as your speed isn't too low but I, I think even a lower speed like for example I'm on 100 Mbps you could be on 15 Mbps as long as no one's hogging your bandwidth on your home Wi-Fi uh, you can still get a ping drop because the game only needs a few, as you saw in my speed test in Singapore, the game only needs a few MBPS at most uh, to maintain maintain a connection. It's the ping that's important. So the speed at which the packets can go through. But one thing I could try, um, let's see here. I could try to open task manager. Is there an always on top button here? Always on top, yeah. 
So what I could try is I could just go to Ethernet and you can actually see this is what the game's using. It's, it's so small. So you don't actually need much bandwidth. It's just your bandwidth is going to be eaten up by people watching YouTube and things on your Wi-Fi. That's what's going to cause ping spikes, not necessarily needing a 20 Mbps connection even. You'd be fine even on 5 Mbps as long as the ping is stable. So there, there's your thing right there. That's my Ethernet. And it's using in Kbps. So not even 1 Mbps. Uh, of bandwidth is needed to play Path of Exile. And I've got people using, but this is more of my total bandwidth, I've got people using the connection into all the room. But as for my own setup, with just the game open, it's it's using barely anything. I went into the wrong building though on this map. But yeah, you can also see this is just like a dual purpose type of, so you can see that that was very low data usage. Uh, you can also see that my performance is fairly high. This is due to playing at a high resolution in the game, but my clock speeds are holding. But I'm also going to be doing a 1080p test for you guys that are wondering if, if you can get this kind of performance at 1080p. The main issue is people are running single channel RAM and thinking that it's only the capacity that matters. So they're looking at 8 gigabyte. their system's only using 5 gigabytes, and then they think, well, my RAM's not a bottleneck or their CPU is only showing 40% usage so they think well my CPU can't be bottlenecking the GPU because the usage isn't maxed out but to be honest the the CPU usage depends on the game engine and some game engines only use six threads so on a Ryzen 3600 you're never gonna get more than about 50% usage because it's only ever gonna use half the threads so you could still be bottlenecking uh, on those three uh, on those six threads uh, it's just not going to show 100% usage if you just look at a if you look at a usage calculator like this. So see here, if you've just got that kind of usage, which is showing for the total of the CPU, you're likely never going to see it getting up into the 80 to 90%. But on the few threads it is using, for example, on my eight-thread CPU, it looks to be loading more on about four of the threads. You can see these two here and these two here are higher loaded, and then these ones are all these four are under 30 percent around 30 percent or less so it's using these four threads primarily but also the game engine is not optimized to to max out the threads that it has because that would cause everyone's like if your cpu threads get maxed out like if you're on a four core cpu it would cause all four core cpus to lag like hell uh if the game was optimized like there's a there's a balance with optimization where you're your usage can can impact negatively. So if a game's optimized to hit 200 FPS, for example, on a four thread CPU, that'll be great for people that's, that are on an eight thread CPU because they're gonna have headroom, but the people on a four thread CPU are gonna struggle to run the game properly because their CPUs are gonna be maxing out to push that 200 FPS. And then their, their FPS will basically tank because they've got no more CPU resources for running the rest of their system, if that makes sense. So they won't have resources for running, you know, background apps, um, multitasking, anything. It'll and people will complain and say the game's unoptimized. But then on those high thread count CPUs, the game running at 200 FPS, maxing out those four threads, they would be calling it optimized. So it's there's optimization that can lean favor different uh, s system setups that you have to take into account. So this game running 150 FPS but not maxing out the threads does not mean that I'm not CPU bottleneck even though these four threads it's using are not maxed out. It just means that the game is optimized to run around this kind of frame rate with my setup. And if I had a more powerful CPU with higher clock speeds, those four threads might be lower usage, but the FPS could still be higher because of those higher clock speeds. So it would be able to run the game better, but it won't, still won't max out, obviously. Um, it's just that it just depends on, on the CPU itself and the IPC that it's capable of. But that's just to give an example because I've seen people, uh, I, I literally looked up comparisons for my RX 5700 to see who else is trying to run Path of Exile with this game, uh, with with this GPU, and I saw people having literally half my FPS and they're getting constant drops to 20 and their clock speed's not holding and I'm going to run 1080p and prove that the game can run fine uh, at 1080p with lower usage because low usage is normal to an extent. If you're running a low resolution on a card that's capable of 4K, it's not going to need to max out 
frame rates unless the CPU and the RAM are high enough to push the frame rates the engine is optimized for. So this in this game engine, at least on a 6th gen i7, looks optimized for around 150 FPS. And this is at this is at a uh, ultra wide 1440p though. At 1080p, I would expect it would be much more CPU bound, and I still might hit around 150 FPS, but it might push towards 200 for the max. And that's just my estimate without actually having exclusively tested 1080p yet. But yeah, I'm just trying to give that explanation there because I did see like a, a whole comment thing, and there's a, a bunch of people having problems with the RX 5700 in certain titles, and they're not realizing that their memory bandwidth that's available on single channel is not enough to push 150 FPS on a card capable of 200 FPS because the bandwidth is not is not there. You need a you need dual channel or a really high single channel RAM speed to to provide the FPS uh, to provide the bandwidth available for for the hardware to to communicate. So a CPU that can push 200 FPS and a GPU that can push 200 FPS need say 30,000 Mbps of bandwidth. If you're on a single stick of RAM, you'll have around 15,000 Mbps of bandwidth. So not only will you be bottlenecking really hard, you'll be getting constant stutter and FPS drops because think of those 200 frames that are trying to communicate with the CPU and GPU, 200 frames worth of data from the CPU. It pushes some of it over to the GPU. The GPU tries to push information back that it's processed those frames you know for rendering uh, it's it's rendering those frames and it's got to give information back to the CPU right meanwhile the CPU is still trying to push 200 frames at exactly the same time and it's only getting about 150 worth through so 50 frames are basically being dropped or hung up somewhere between the CPU and GPU pipelines so then can you understand like why that would cause constant FPS drops because the, G the GPU when it realizes that it can't push those frames out or when the game engine realizes that it's not getting frames in time it has to it has to drop frames and so the CPU and GPU are constantly trying to adjust their their load or their usage to to match what the game is telling it it's it's using so the game the game would run 200 FPS it's trying to send data for 200 FPS FPS the engine now uh, the CPU is trying to push it, but then there's only 50 m uh, there's only 80 FPS worth of bandwidth available with that 15 with that single channel of RAM. So I think Fabio he he did a video on it that explains it really well. But it's just a quick quick explanation is that most of the time it's been a a memory bandwidth issue that people aren't realizing. So it doesn't matter if the capacity is not here. Like you could have eight eight gigabytes. You're only using four gigabytes. It's nothing to do with that. It's to do with the speed that 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 eight gigabytes can transfer at with only a single stick. Uh, in dual channel, it's doubled. So, so technically, you could have two four gigabyte sticks, right? So a total of eight with thirty thousand Mbps bandwidth, around three hundred uh, three thousand megahertz speed frequency, outperforming a sixteen gigabyte stick. So you've got less total RAM, but it's performing better than sixteen gig that's running in single channel because the single channel stick is still going to be limited by uh, limited in transfer speed to being one stick because it's one physical stick with two sticks the system can communicate using both at exactly the same time so you can see two is always going to be faster than one uh, in that regard even if that that one stick is a higher speed like 3000 megahertz uh, the frequency is not as important as the dual single versus dual channel like the frequency can Im improve the bandwidth by a few thousand mbps but with speeds so 2133 versus 2666 might give a few thousand boost but single versus dual is literally doubling doubling that bandwidth so it doubles 15,000 and doubles that to 30,000 um, and at higher speeds obviously you're, you're doubling the higher speed so sorry for that like long-winded explanation and kind of repeating myself but I just want to really get that through to people if, if you see someone complaining about FPS ask about their RAM first the other issue can be temperatures and their chipset drivers which are just as critical as the GPU drivers if the chipset drivers are missing it has the same effect as hurting the memory bandwidth because the chipset drivers control the motherboard communication between the PCI slot the CPU uh, the the RAM so having missing chipset drivers can have a similar effect 
into gimping your memory bandwidth as running single versus full channel. So if those are missing, you'll also get FPS drop stutter. Basically, the the system can't communicate uh, efficiently. So I think I'm done here. I'm just like playing this random character. I'm just testing this ping that is stable, and it has been pretty good. And I wasn't getting any rubber banding. I was on dead set honest. I was getting rubber banding at 100 100 m ms last night. So anyway, um, now I'll what will I do? I'll try dropping. I don't know if it's worth doing at this because it's it's gonna basically window the 1080p instead of having a pure 1080p video. So it's hard for 1080p users to see all the statistics without uh, doing a 1080p recording native. So what I can do is I'll exit out Path of Exile. Okay, so we've already confirmed. Oh, I was getting better bandwidth, just a different server, but higher ping. Now, what I what else I wanted to confirm on is I'm going to turn exit lag off and show you Valorant because I got access. I, I literally <laughs> was just watching back-to-back -back streams, uh, not necessarily at the keyboard the whole time, but most of it. And eventually I, I got the drop. You have to connect your Riot Games account through Twitch. So you have to go to Twitch, go to your settings, connection, you can connect Riot Games, and then you've got to watch a Valorant stream that has drops enabled. It has to say drops enabled below the video. Don't look at the name of the video because they sometimes they say drops enabled and it's not actually enabled. They trick people to watch their stream. But with Valorant, uh, it seems like they don't actually have Asian servers. I don't know why. Uh, they just haven't haven't supported it officially yet. Or they might have, and it's really fresh. But I'm I'm gonna log in and test right now. But I tried to play a few matches, and you know, CS:GO at 200 200 ping is unplayable, and I was getting 280 in Valorant, which it's got a higher tick rate, but that was making it worse <laughs> um, because you know. The players with good ping are getting a much more consistent hit registration. But this is this is more of a what the uh, W not W T exit lag, <laughs> sorry, more of an exit lag test um, to demonstrate how it works. And I have not tested it in this game yet, so there's a chance it might not do anything. It might suck at this game. But for the majority of games I've tested exit lag with, uh, it's been really really good uh, with. The rival, uh, I almost said their name before, uh, WTF Fast. I found that, at least for my ISP in my location, their their results were a bit hit and miss. Sometimes it was good, sometimes it wasn't. Uh, with exit lag, it's been more consistent for my location. So there's a chance that someone that can't get good exit lag performance might get good uh, WTF Fast performance. And you just have to test for yourself. They do have trials available. But for now, I'm just text testing exit lag because it's the one that I've actually signed up for repeatedly uh, when I've had ping issues with certain games. And I'm playing that game for a good month. I'll, si I'll sign up for a month's subscription just to enjoy that game a bit better. So client FPS 15, why is it tanking? I think because I'm recording and it, it was loading something while I tried to record. Sorry, I've got to restart this, guys. There's a bit of an issue with uh, Relive still that sometimes when you've got a recording running and you go to start a game, it seems to load something wrong. Like it loads, it conflicts with the, the recording encoder and then that game will just have tanked FPS until you stop and start the recording. So if it does that, I'm going to cut this recording short and I'll just make a separate video for Valorant and exit lag testing. Yeah, you can see it's, it's a little bit laggy. See once it's loaded in. Twenty one. Yeah, that still looks like the same issue. All right, guys, I'm gonna do a separate video. Uh, if you if you learn something and you like the results, and please sign up using my link. And appreciate appreciate all the support. See you in the next one.